Hello everybody and welcome to another comedian's interview for my blog A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 750 comedians and counting over the past 45 years. My guest today is the wonderful Welsh comedian Mr. Robin Morgan. Yes! Hello! <laughs> Hello. I've, I've missed those claps, Richard Gill. I've missed those claps. I'm very well. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, mate. Lovely to see you. Great you to too. see you. Thank you so, so much for doing this. No, my pleasure. Um, as uh, The uh, interview is going to be about an hour long and it's going to be about your comedy career, my friend. So um i'm looking forward to to hearing um to hearing what you have to say we're cool. gonna go right back to the start of your career and please can you tell me how did you become a comedian sure so i was a huge sort of stand-up comedy fan throughout my teens um so anytime there was any kind of stand-up i used to basically go on ticketmaster or another kind of ticketing site go on comedy and looking cardiff and wherever basically any gig that had happened i went to it so i think the first wow. gig i probably think i might have seen russell howard perform one of his tour shows at the st david's hall which is a sort of i'd say like 800 seater wow. so he was sort of at, at the point where he's kind of been on mock quite a few times and become a household name yeah saw him quite a few times snuck into the glee club underage with my brother's passport a couple of times when i think i saw a frankie boyle tour show russell was doing new material on a thursday mcintyre was doing new material wow. and then when i turned 18 i was at uni in cardiff as well and i saw that they were advertising for bar staff so i put my cv in there and then worked there for two years so my first shift there was a lee evans new material night where oh, he was unlisted mate. And he did like 90 minutes in the middle and it was, he got a standing ovation onto the stage like it was wow. like as he walked on he got no um and then met, yeah crazy and then through there i met a couple of people who'd either done open mic or they, they basically mentioned it because i had no idea that it was a possible i just thought there was like lee evans and <laughs> billy Connolly and eddie Azards, <laughs> and that's it and then like when working at the glare I was, oh shit there's a circuit there's a whole like yeah, circuit yeah. of people who kind of like go on to tv and off and you know that kind of thing and i had no idea how like what's whether it was a career or anything you could you could do physically so meeting people um uh, including a guy called Clint Edwards, who's a fantastic comic. Um, right. He um, he runs a gig and still does called Drones Club at Chapter Arts Centre. And I bumped into him one night, mentioned, I think a little bit drunk, that I like, oh, I've always wanted to give it a go. And then he booked me in for it, I think three months down the line and told me to write five minutes, which I think is quite a good, good advice. Because I guess the people who just want to do it, I don't know, for maybe for ego's sake, I don't know, just like, well, I want to do it now they might sort of balk at the three month idea but i think it gave me time to kind of like work on a set and um, yeah, 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 did, yeah. Did, did, did one gig and it didn't go t badly so and and here we are 10 years later wow i um my my first ever gig was les dawson aged six uh, nice. <laughs> um at scarborough on holiday and i was hooked from then on we we saw tommy cooper the next year Amazing. And uh, in um, there was the, there was a good long stretch where a very good friend of mine from my home city's Carlisle, and there's 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 four old friends, and one of them went to Manchester, and he would book up everything, every comedian going in the in the eighties and the nine well specifically the nineties, and he would go around and ask folk. Um, would you like to come and see the the comedian? I was, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And he would forget who <laughs> is seeing what because sure. he booked so much. Much, sure. but I used to love to go and and see, and that's where I got my grounding for um, watching them all because. Um, 700s quite a lot 750 whatever it is is quite a lot but yeah i mean but, you've got to you've got to start young to hit those numbers exactly <laughs> <laughs> but 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 with you the grounding certainly at the club was fantastic for all your for all the comedians that were on the bill 
Yeah, definitely. Because I think I think the first time I ever saw stand up not live was my uncle, who was in New Zealand, came over for a summer and he had some Eddie Izzard DVDs on his laptop. Oh wow! So that's what. So me and my brother watched those with him, and I think it was kind of sort of. I don't know, he's just so eloquent and silly and he just, we sort of fell in love with that. But I think I kind of parked it for a while. But then I think, you know, I got into sort of the, the Boosh and Dark, yeah, yeah, Garth yeah. Marenghi's Dark yeah. Place and those kind of like sitcoms. And then, you know, Mock was on a lot and I saw yeah, yeah. quite religiously when it was sort of, when it was a, was a newish thing. Um, but yeah, then the, then the Glee was just inc- incredible to sort of see, I, you know, we used to open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And, some of the staff used to sort of go into this, you know, the bar's closed when the show's on. So some of the staff used to just go into the staff room, but I stayed behind the bar and I just watched every, oh, like, amazing. the show every night, every weekend. So what, like, what an education to oh, sort of yeah. do that, you Fantastic, know? fantastic. So the the Glee Club, was that where you had your first gig? Did Were you doing, like, five-minute sets in little tiny clubs with friends to get to get you started? No, not or? really. So, so, so the Glee kind of was... Um, I was quite aware that the Glee is sort of... As a, as a, as a nationwide club chain, it's, yeah. like, one of the most respected, I'd say. Like, it's I think it's up there with, like, the store and yeah. comedia and stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I was very wary about trying to sort of gig there, I think. Like, I didn't want to do it while I was shit. I wanted to sort of get a Aww. bit okay first. So, 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 so the first gig I did was at this, arts, at this open mic gig called Drones um, in July t- 2010. Wow. And, um, yeah, it'd been sort of three months kind of working on this sort of five-minute thing. And then a local comic called Dan Mitchell, who's very, very funny, um, offered to... Um, like go through my set with me before, before like the afternoon of so i went around his house and he kind of sort of said you could do this you could do this which is really sweet and i think you know in terms of structure was quite nice and i think i'd already know like i went into the, the glee the night before like i went in early and went into the acts room and played around with the mic stand so i knew how what to Brilliant. do with it and how to sort of adjust yeah, it yeah, yeah 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 um i don't know just like to sort of feel like oh you know i, I look like a comedian at the glee if i move this out of the way like correctly you know because occasionally you see sort of very very new people and they just yeah. kind of like leave it in front of them and i don't know it just sort of um i felt like even if maybe i wasn't the funniest almost original at least i looked like a comedian for a little bit you know <laughs> well well you are all heroes in my eyes this this, <laughs> this blog is designed to be an enthuse um because uh you have given me so much laughter over the years every one of you and uh, um uh, i had i had a go at it once i was absolutely terrified and uh, I've, I've told this story many times, but um, I, I know the guy who runs the Free Fringe at Edinburgh Fringe, and he put on uh, an old folks uh, gong show <laughs> right. on, a, on, a, on a Monday afternoon. And he said, go and have a go. You've written a script, you've written a script. And I had this five minutes, like you said, and uh, I walked out there and uh, the first line was, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, people think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, but I can't see the resemblance myself. And I thought that was a guaranteed laugh because I look yeah. exactly like him. Yeah, yeah. And an old bloke at the back went, sod off, gun me off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And the chat and the the promoter said, "Have another go, have another go." And I had another go. Same similar thing happened, and I thought, oh, no. "I don't know whether I could do this, I'll, but I will support you all in the audience." Sure, but more. I guess gong shows that that's the, they're, that's they're very nice, hard nice, to start <laughs> with, you know. And but like you see a lot, of, but especially at the store in London, like the King yeah. Gong, where people think that that's what that's how you do it, and yeah. they think that that's what gigs are. Never, never um, say never, but um, uh, sure. I'd rather be in the audience laughing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fair um, enough. What do you like to talk about on stage? Um, I think it basically just me. Like, <laughs> I, 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 that's no bad I, thing. <laughs> I, I think it's. I think it's always been quite inward looking for for a long time. So definitely, sort of up until the last couple of years, maybe. Um, so it used, you know, when I'd started, I was six months into um, a relationship. So I talked about me and my girlfriend. Then we moved in together. Talked about that. Brilliant. Then yeah. we um, got engaged and got married and had kids. So like, it's always been sort of quite sort of familial based. Um, but then, you know, just just silly 
silly stuff about my parents and family you know extended family and stuff and things you always, know things, things yeah i think so about. it's yeah it's yeah. always been, it's always been quite sort of personal stories and anecdotes and i think so like the, the best the ones that work the best were ones which crossed over into quite sort of not observational territory because i always i was always in awe of people like sean walsh and josh Whitcomb and mcintyre who can who can do this amazing observational material and when i was starting out i was i was trying to write kind of similar things to that but it's right. just so hard to find that idea that is so universal and have the skills to sort of pass it off without just i don't know telling somebody what you've noticed you know so i realized that when i've got anecdotes and things that have happened to me um that other that's happened to other people that's my form of observational comedy i think you know like things within relationships or things with young children or stuff like that. Um, but then a couple of years ago, so 2019's ta- um, Edinburgh show, that was the first time I started talking about stuff more outwardly looking about right. sort of um, like gender politics and stuff, the, the stuff that I think matters to me, I think. Because I remember when I was, I think I was doing a set at Cardiff Glee and a comic asked me, so what do you talk about? Because they knew, knew me as like the barman. Like, what do you talk about? I was like, oh, you know, no, nothing at all, really. And he sort of wrinkled his nose a little bit as if like, you need to have, you need to talk about something. But I always just assumed that I was, I started quite young. So I was, I was 20. I was, I was about to turn 21 when I started, which, you know, when you think about a lot of people, it's not that young. But for me, I felt like I didn't know what my opinions were. I didn't yeah, know yeah. what. Yeah. I, I don't, who's going to listen to me about politics? I'm just some, some, some kid who's only been voting two years, you know, sort of. Um, what? So I feel like it took me a long time to kind of work out what I yes, care about. Yeah, yeah. You know, what um, comes across on your act though is that is that you're very you're you're unafraid to say what you want, and okay. and and I think that is wonderful. And I think um, any comedian or any p- uh, public speaker should be able to do that. But but. Um, the way that you do it, you sort of like build it up, and it and and it comes to a comic conclusion that's just so fantastic and and, and oh, that's it's, very sweet. It's so it, it's so well done, and it's magical to watch, my friend. Um, Thank you. To date, what has been your best and worst gig? Um, so best, um, I'm not sure. Best, I'd say that. I did, um, I was very lucky in lockdown to be, uh, so I moved back to Cardiff um, last January yeah. 2020. So when lockdown, so Wales, you're not allowed to gig. Right. Um, you're not allowed to do any sort of performances outdoor or in. But luckily I'm still close to Bristol and Mark Olver, who is just oh, one of the loveliest fantastic. people in the world, yeah. basically set up so many gigs in Bristol and was giving me a lot of them. So I did um, one outdoor in Lakota, uh, this this nightclub um, this sort of gardens uh, where Russell Howard was doing like a new material thing. So I did that and that was like my third gig back after lockdown. I didn't feel like it went very well. But then I got invited to do support him at one of his Clapham Grand shows wow. in I think August. So again, sort of like socially distanced, but because it was like a three tiered theatre. Oh, it's an it, amazing that, place. That, yeah. It's like, it's the first time I've been there and like yeah. it just felt like you had it felt like a like a hundred percent sold out non socially distance gig, and I was so nervous. And you know, he's oh, like, mate. as I said, like he's he's basically the reason I started doing stand up. I think I think I, I was really really in love with him on Mock, and he was a young guy, and very, he was very silly, natural, and, isn't he? Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. and just yeah. really affable, and it just yeah. felt like he was telling stories, and I yeah. really liked that. So then, sort of before, you know, for him to sort of come into the dressing room before and sort of just have a chat, and then me get to sort of open for him, it was it was really it was really cool. Helped it was really enormously. Lovely. Helped yeah, enormously. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And the gig went well as well, which is lovely. Oh, but I think um, just the, the the whole thing just felt like, especially after the year that you know, sort of yeah, that that was last year, it felt like yeah. a really lovely sort of full circle career thing. That's brilliant, and it's all experience for you as well, isn't it? Because you know you. you every gig that you do um something will happen that will gain experience for you to to be a better comedian 
good or yeah, bad. Sure. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's it. And I think that was the, that was the sort of the biggest room I'd played, not yeah. necessarily the biggest audience. Like when I um, so I'm quite good friends with Ellie Taylor. We do like we've, we've written a Radio Four thing together and oh, I supported her on she's tour lovely, a couple yeah. of times. Yeah. She's so good, man. Yeah. Um, so I supported her on the, her Leicester Square Theatre date maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, right. and that was lovely as well because yeah. that was. You know, I, I you know that's one of the first places I saw stand up as well. I think me and my me and my then girlfriends went down for the weekend and another the weekend good off. venue, Leicester Square Great. Theatre, yeah, totally. Yeah. And like to sort of do that to a, like a full room, that was that was a nice moment as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about what about worse ones? Have you had worst. many? <laughs> um, yeah, no. I, I think I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> I've probably had some like I've probably had like a lot of mediocre gigs, really really bad ones. Right. So one really bad one that stands out, which I'd probably say is the worst one, was my first paid twenty for Jonglers. Right. So I'd done the tens for them and done okay, and then I was asked to do a twenty at the Covent Garden Jonglers, which is in Sway. Yeah. I yeah. think, and just underneath the nightclub in Sway. And um, I'd got the mega bus down from Cardiff. It was a bit late. I'd got there. I'd got to the got to the venue. I thought I was in the middle because I just assumed that first oh, twenty you no. put you put your son on the switch. But I was I was first on. <laughs> so I got there, and the compass said we're starting the show now. And I was there with like my bag and stuff. I hadn't worked out. I didn't I didn't have a twenty at that point. I probably had oh. when the gigs went well. I had a twenty because I could ride the laughs and I could chat a little bit and I felt natural enough to kind of like banter with the audience. But really, I had fifteen, maybe right. less. Right. Um, <laughs> so I kind of got thrown on, and, the, and I hadn't really done Jonglers gigs that much. No, they were quite sort of, they were quite rough and ready. Yeah. And I was this sort of 24-year-old, sort of very skinny kid in like a, you know, little check shirt and stuff going on. And my first joke, which usually works, didn't get anything. Oh. When I tried to sort of like do my second and third, a stag dude came in. So the front row was a stag, the second row was a stag, a third stag came oh, in, there was one no. at the back, there was Hendu's on the corner. So then I could just know, I knew that I wasn't getting anything. I knew the compare had just been quite sort of like alpha and aggressive with the stags. So then I tried to do that, which isn't me at all. So then when this sort of like, when this sort of sweet young man comes on stage and then starts calling everyone fuckers, it just felt like, what is, what is happening? So they obviously didn't enjoy it. So it got to the point where everyone started chatting. Uh, eventually people started booing. And, oh, man. Um, Somebody, um, uh, one of those, one, uh, <laughs> one person from the stand who went to the bar, bought me a beer and took it up to me as a sort of like, get, get off me. Oh, trying to sort of pay me off. No. And I saw the best man, uh, look at his stag on the front row and say sorry to him. Like I was the final nail in the coffin of his oh, weekend. <laughs> Oh, that is awful. It was How? pretty smelly. Like I, I left oh. the stage after, tw I did 12 minutes and I got off. But again, um, experience knowing that you were totally. not going to face that again, you know that, oh, that yeah. is awful. If, it was, it was oh. pretty, it was pretty bad. Like I can laugh about it now. It was, it was, I'd oh. say, two thousand thirteen. That is, that is, I'm lost for words, and I never am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, no, no, nothing's been, nothing's been as bad as that. And also, I don't think I really have bad gigs anymore. I like, yeah. uh, you know, you know, touch yeah. wood. I can I can usually because I compare a lot and because I'm quite yeah. sort of like affable on stage. I yeah. can usually, even if it's a rough gig, I can kind of charm my way through it. Yes, yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and that that is a great quality to have. Mm. The the charm on the stage is is fantastic. I've seen you do that many a time. Um, how do you cope with any nerves on stage before you go on stage? You say you, you say you. you do you get nervous? You, you you said you did early on. Yeah, I I, I I mean, only if it's a a big or new gig for me. So the first time I I did right. the store, very nervous. Those Russell gigs, very nervous. The first I did like a a telly thing a couple of years ago for BBC Wales, very nervous before that. Um, anything that's sort of like out of the ordinary, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but weirdly, though, those first gigs back, those outdoor gigs in lockdown. Uh, uh, they felt I was nervous before those because I hadn't gigged in like four months. No. But then again, that's that's a new thing doing it outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with car horns. That... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Totally very nervous of the car gigs. Um, I don't know how so you did that. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was it was very strange. At that point, I was just gagging for any sort of performing. So I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. 
Yeah, but, um, exactly. <laughs> I don't know, like, I, I think just a lot of pacing, a lot of drinking of water, a lot of going to the toilet, just sort of, um, yeah, I I don't know. I just try and stay relatively calm. Yes, but yeah, if, if yeah. it's... For, for, if, if I was doing the Glee tonight, I wouldn't be nervous no. because I know that club at the back of my hand yeah. and it's lovely. And if, if something's at stake, if I'm, like if I'm trying out for a club or you know, if it's if I know a producer's in or something, it's just those kind of stakes. I think. When you mentioned about Russell Howard and and the the um, tour with him, I first saw him before he was famous. And I been I just bought a brand new mobile phone, and I didn't know how to work it properly, and it went off at the start just oh, as no. he bounded onto the stage, and that was it for the hour. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And I thought, no, leave it. <laughs> yeah, I'll oh, bless. Okay. I, that that's the David Hall gig. I think I was wearing yeah. a pa- like a t-shirt that said Pac Man. And it was yeah. front and centre because I, I got to sort of buy it's one of those theatres that you can sort of choose where you and I chose because I was such like a fanboy I chose front and centre with my friend Carrot and then yeah he, he saw Pac Man but thought it said Pie Man and did a sort of seven minute riff on Pie Man oh. and I was like this is amazing <laughs> so he's, he's talking to me it's great fantastic um, how do you remember all your routines um good question i i guess if i'm learning if i'm writing a new edinburgh show that's that's quite tricky because it's such a long time to kind of like be on stage but i I preview with like a big pucker pad full of notes and i'll just kind of read them off it for a bit yeah and then in 2018 jess foster q directed my show and i think she was quite sort of she was like get off notes you can't be using notes anymore i was like okay jess i'm sorry um in a very nice way she's a brilliant director yeah Um, yeah yeah yeah. and um Yes. So in terms of learning it, I guess just repetition and doing it on stage. But in that sort of preview stage, I'm really just kind of writing it on stage as well. I have like the kernel of an idea and I'll kind of just talk shit about it for a while. And then hopefully something will come of it. Yeah. yeah, when When I started, I used to sort of, if I was doing a 20 minute set, I would perform 20 minutes in front of the mirror holding like a pen or something to sort of pretend like I was doing it yeah. just again and again and again. And when I'm doing an hour, I'll sometimes do that as well. If I'm trying to get off notes, just do it again and again and again in front of the mirror. Wow. That is, that is amazing. Let's, let's move on to Edinburgh. What, mm. what was your first Edinburgh fringe like? Um, what um, year did you go? So I um, I hadn't even heard of the Edinburgh Festival until I saw, again, working at the Glee, Tom Rigglesworth was doing his tour show, his Virgin Trains yeah. tour show there. And it was the first time I'd seen like an hour, apart from one of Russell's shows, but like an hour like constructed with narrative and just sweet show and well, beautiful. So good, yeah. so yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had previews come in. I didn't even know what a, what a preview was. So I, I, it hadn't been until I um, I wrote some jokes for this Radio Wales radio show and they, they took us up there to sort of do this documentary and stuff up there. And I did a couple of gigs while I was up there. Then when I moved to London and got an agent, they said, so you're going to do Edinburgh? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know what that is. I have no idea. <laughs> nice so, city <laughs> yeah 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 exactly i'll get in there why not but like i i, I literally had no idea yeah that, that, that all that every comic in the world goes up there yeah. and sort of like performs you know all, all month so, so in 2015 i did a half an hour show because i know that now a lot of people do you know they'll go up and do a showcase and then yeah. they'll do a triple hand a double hander a 40 minute show then your debut hour so you've got six years of edinburgh under your belt whereas i went up with half an hour on my own which was fine it was nice and then the following year i did my debut wow. with maybe in hindsight maybe i should have been a little bit more calculated about it but 2015 it was okay it was um just a club set really that i tried to tag a theme onto but i, yeah. I watched loads of shows that year yeah. i watched tons of them and that was really important for me to kind of see those hours um, and then 2016 was my first hour and had I had a nice time. I had a really, really loved the time. I was really, really proud of that show and it seemed to really resonate with people. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, um, my first Edinburgh, I, I go to the Edinburgh Fringe. I'm very fortunate to go every year. Yeah. And uh, um, 
uh, I see about fifty shows in the in the week that I go. Wow! And I need a holiday when I come back. Yeah, but, totally. Uh, <laughs> so it's like six fantastic. six shows, a, six seven shows a day or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's, I, that's I, I cannot get enough of it. You step off the train at Waverley, and the atmosphere is just incredible. I I really missed it last yeah. year. I, yeah, was, yeah. I was you know because we because we were in that kind of you know I, I was halfway through writing a show at that point, and we had it kind of. You know, it would have turned into a nice show, I think. And now I think there's bits of it that will just have to be parked forever as jokes that will never make it. Oh, um, just because, you know, like people, you know, the, the, the world has changed, doesn't it? Like it's everyone's priorities yeah. have changed. I wonder like who, like, I don't think it will happen this year. I don't think um, it will either. Um, there's talk. They have to decide in April. And, right. if, and if there is uh, anything going on, it would be very, very small. But I don't think it would work. Yeah, because there's far too many people yeah totally everyone Such flying in and stuff and traveling in yeah. totally so whereas yeah, yeah I, th I think you know another fallow year but then you know 2022 will be will be lovely to go back up again well once once everybody is hopefully vaccinated etc 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 it and they can open things up fantastic please bring back live comedy as soon as i miss it yeah 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 i know i know i know <laughs> right so um can you tell me we're going to move on to your writing process sure can you tell me about your writing process because not only do you do stand-up comedy you're also a major tv writer You've well, written for that's... a lot. You've written for Have I Got News For You, The Mash Report. I've done my research, mate. Yes, you have. And Thank the you. news quiz and Indeed. the now show on the radio, which I've been members in the audience of, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so is it different, the writing process, to TV and radio than it is to stand-up? How do you go about it? How do you think of a show? How do you think of a routine? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely different writing for a show or writing for other people compared to yeah. me. I, I was, I'm, I'm always, not to blow my own trumpet, but I mean, I'm very industrious when I write for other people. I feel like I can, I can write a lot of jokes. It's always quantity over quality. Um, oh. I'll, write, I'll, write, I'll write a lot of jokes. Um, but for me, I always struggle a little bit with that kind of inspiration thing. I don't know whether that's probably because I've got a brief, like, on you know cats or mash report you're writing on a topic so you see so all your news, news quiz or now show you're writing yeah. on you know, news stories so you read the news story and you go oh that could be a joke that's a setup that's a fun you know whereas for me i'm talking you know what do i care about maybe i should look about reading the news but then topical stuff on stage has such a short shelf life it's incredible to sort of like write I, i'm always in, in awe of kind of comics um, who can like Ian Stone I did a weekend at the yeah. Banana Cab yeah. maybe about like 18 months ago on the Friday Saturday and he had two different 20 minute sets both as sort of topical as each other and it's just it's just it insane insane comic watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah for me I've got like notes in my phone of little things that I think are funny um, if something happens or if I say something in conversation sometimes I just go oh that's actually quite funny I'll write that down and then when I have a writing day which is usually about an hour before a new material gig right. I will um, sort of like try and flesh something out either writing it into like a Google Doc or I'll try and write freehand often when I'm driving to a gig I'll start speaking out loud and then sort of riffing like that and then asking wow. uh, Siri to dictate wow. my notes. Wow, that's, a, so, that's a new method. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, I, so I think just to use that time before a show, I think, and before the before the day, because you're on your own, you don't need to sort yeah. of worry about yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with two two little kids running around, like it's the only time I really get to of myself course. anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's lots of very badly spelt notes in my phone <laughs> where Siri has misheard what I've meant, <laughs> and I kind of then have to work out what 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 did I say? What did I say on the wow. call? So so when you're on stage delivering the material, do you have like pointers that you know? Uh, that will guide you through the, the the routine or do you have points where you think well normally that will, that gets a laugh so I know if I get to that point I know I'm going on to the next bit because yeah, so, it's extraordinary so, so, to see 
Yeah, it's, so it, again, like, I guess it depends whether I'm doing a set or an hour. Yeah. But whenever I've got like loads of notepads all around me, but I mean, like yeah. before, but in the in the green room or wherever before, I'll write down pretty much that what I'll do. Um, right. You know, and and it's in it's in a structure that's kind of organically become that structure where I set up, you know, like strongest joke first, second strongest joke last type thing. Yeah. So I frame it as like an introduction to me. I'm from Wales. Here are a couple of Wales jokes. Um, maybe a bit of topical stuff. Uh, then you know, uh, married, wife, kids other general stuff and then so it, it, I kind of think within a 20 minute set I'm kind of explaining so you're to somebody building who I am. your life story in comedy totally. really yeah 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 totally so, so I, I set up who I am I set up who is in my life I set up my world view I think and yeah. I haven't I don't really think of it like that until I've literally just said it out loud but yeah. I suppose that's yeah, what yeah. I'm doing um yeah so this is who I am this is who who makes up my life this is what I think of the world I suppose that's how I kind of block it out um, and then, but sometimes I'll, I'll miss out a little joke there, or sometimes I'll chat to an audience member and yeah, they'll yeah. go, "Oh, I'm I'm a teacher, so I, oh, my wife's a teacher, so I'll go into that kind yeah, of stuff." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's I think because I do a lot of comparing, it's it's organic. Like I'm I never stick to the same, you know, it's it's never the same twenty minutes set. No, no, no. Because I'll either have like a new couple of jokes here and there, or I'll get distracted and talk about something yeah. else. <laughs> Do you have any devices to cope with difficult audiences? Um, <sighs> not really. Just plow on. I, like I, I sometimes when I was when I was uh, less experienced, yeah. I would if I had anybody chatting, I'd kind of go like, "What was that?" and try and address it. Um, I don't know yeah. whether that's because I'd seen better comics than me at the Glee do it and, yeah. you know, get an applause break off some heckle put down. Some people often ask me, like, do you have, oh, have you got any put, heckle put downs? Like, I've pre-repaired them and I, I've never, I've never done no, that. No, um, no. Just because my, I feel like... My, my view is we're not here to, we're not there to hear them, we're there to yeah. hear you. Yeah, you know, and absolutely. So why but, are they there? You know, if they're not. Oh, correct. But know. I think you're 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 a good audience member, Richard. Yeah, that's yeah. that's why. Whereas you know, so many people go well in the in the before times. You know, come along on a birthday party, and one person likes comedy, and ten people yeah. don't. But they're yeah. there to sell it. They're there for Sean's birthday. Yeah, they're yeah. not there to listen. So it's 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 a different thing. And I guess you have to still play the entire room. I feel like I'm kind of like relatively quick enough to be able to if i if i interact with them I'll, i should be able to not put them down but kind of give them the attention they need and i'm sort of and then move on <laughs> yeah like <laughs> one, one thing i do i do like is with a bit like i can be a bit sort of acidic and with it with like a nice smile oh okay no shut the fuck up like that kind of thing <laughs> Which usually, I'm also, yeah, the, and because I'm sort of like you know the the the, the bloke you'd want well, to introduce to your mother, like it yeah, seems yeah. quite sort of like it seems quite yeah. surprising to come from me. So that, that I suppose that like I can be quite bitchy, right? Um, which works well for me, I think. Right. But but I always try and make sure that I'm the first person. If I'm comparing, especially I, I I'm the first person to that I make fun of. I, right. I tell a few self-deprecating jokes at the start because I don't I don't ever want to be so, seen as somebody who picks on people. No, no, of course not. No, no. Um, we're going to move on to comparing. Sure. I I first saw you compare at just the tonic at Camden. Yeah. Twenty. It was twenty. 18, 19, something like that. Mm. And then, of course, you moved on to ABC. Yes. Or was the comedy and you compared then we saw you there i was very impressed with your easygoing style you make it look so easy um do you prefer comparing to performing a routine and why um i think it depends what i've done most of recently right so i i i, I do enjoy comparing and i'm, and I'm glad that i I'm, I'm thank you very much by the way that's for the lovely compliments um, I'm very glad that I'm, you know, decent at it because a it's sort of when I moved to London, it was the only sort of paid work I could get really because, right. you know, th you know, you know those bills where you know amazing TV comics are doing doubles and triples every since. So if they're opening and middling and closing at clubs all around London, who's going to book me? Not off the telly. So comparing, you know, like that that was really good for me when I first moved there because I could earn some money. Um, and I think it's it's it, as you say, kind of 
I think I am quite easy going on stage and it is like sort of hopefully chatting to a mate and that kind of thing. And I can kind of get away with stuff because I am friendly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of, certain, certain clubs where you MC, you're told to do like seven minutes in the first section, five minutes in the second section, one minute in there. And you can't really do much with that. Once you've set the rules for the show, got them settled, told a joke, it's time yeah. to bring someone on. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to comparing where I think it's not about me in any way. Like it's about you're responsible for the show and for everyone else having a good gig. So it's, it's, um, it's dropping the ego thing, I think. But, but you're an act in yourself, so yeah. we are there to see you as well. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, so sometimes that's, that's when I do a lot of comparing. Is I, I find it quite nice to um, take a shift and do like the opening 20 and stuff and do those. Yeah. And, and especially since doing hours, it's, it's nice to have those 30 minute headline slots and stuff to really kind of like explore ideas. And that's when you can really... The, the, I did a lot of 30 minute closing stuff. Oliver gave me a lot in, this, in the summer last year. And that was new for me because I'd never done, never really been booked as a headliner that often before. Right. And it just the, the pacing of it all was so different. And yeah. the fact that we were outside and it was cold, you had to really kind of like, the first couple, I wasn't hitting it hard enough energy wise. And I was kind of just taking my foot off the gas and being quite relaxed. And I realized soon that you kind of have to keep, keep your foot on the gas with it really because... It must be very tiring and very exhausting to do, but of course the payoff is amazing yeah totally yeah, i mean it's yeah. I, haven't, I haven't you know i haven't worked out what's my favorite spot on a bill yet like it's it's quite nice and you know it's, at this stage i'll take literally anything but um yeah i mean it's 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 quite nice to sort of try and get good at those when you do well at an opening 20 that's very satisfying yeah, because yeah, that i think is yeah. probably quite hard and then you get to go home you know it's, yeah. it's great <laughs> yeah 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 what um uh do you um what was i gonna say it's gone uh I go to a lot of comedy with friends of mine and the the best thing they say about and I totally agree with them about your comparing or your presence on a stage is that you're very endearing I've put easy going but you're very sure. endearing and that is a quality before you even say anything it's a, it's it's a great quality to have because certainly when you walk out onto a stage you've got one minute to be original tell a joke be likable and that's daunting but if you've already got this endearing quality to sure. you you're halfway there i would say do you agree yeah, with that? I get, yeah yeah i'd say so yeah and i think it's um i mean it's, it's i don't think i'm anything really different on stage and yeah. off like i don't really think mean, maybe sort of certain bits of me are heightened and things but um, yeah, I mean, I, I always feel like, you know, I was that, that person sitting in a comedy gig wanting to have a lovely time. And yeah. I just feel like if, if, you've, if you've got somebody like, this is, this is great, isn't it? Like, this is, this is brilliant. What, yeah. you know, what do you do? That's amazing. You know, like James Gill is just like the most, the most beautifully positive person in the yeah, world because, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, and, and I it's, wish it's we're, to, we're related, but I don't think we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when he, when he does his family tree on BBC One. <laughs> We'll find out. We'll, find well I'm out. gonna try and do that. And yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um what is your ambition as a comedian? Do you have one? Would you like, for example, would you like a your own T V show? Would you like to be to host a a, a quiz or anything anything like this? Um I always like before I wanted to do stand up, I wanted to write sitcoms and write films and stuff. Right. And I don't think that's really kind of like been benched at all. I d I don't wanna I don't feel like I need to have my name in lights and do arena tours and that kind of stuff. I don't feel like that's something that Yeah, I mean I mean never say never, but I I, I don't think that's really for me. I'd rather I think do tours like we're still still write my own hour shows and do like nice tours to fans and write sitcoms that i could be in i want to write like books and kids books and stuff right? so yeah, um, yeah 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 just kind of like everything I, I just feeling like when i first met with my agent um she said like what do you want to do and i said basically i want to be in a position one day where if i have an idea and think oh no write a book this year like then I'm, you know, well known or respected enough that they go, yeah, write a book, Robin. You write that book. <laughs> so, you know, just basically sort of to, to be having any kind of creative output for what I, for an idea I've got, I suppose. That's brilliant. That's that's a great answer. Um, it's been a horrible 
yeah uh um we're all living in strange times it's 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 just awful at the moment um uh, however um i saw you host online the laughs at cardiff online show you were hosting that from your home and that was the most wonderful night where loads of welsh comedians were paying homage rightly so to the capital of wales cardiff um how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs do you do many of them uh, do you like doing them um yeah I've, I've done quite a lot of them i kind of said yes to everything yeah as soon as as soon as it all hit in march 2020 i kind of yeah just said just said yes to everything and the, the first couple of them were quite i don't think people had got the uh the set of them completely right and i think what was happening is you would perform and it would be streamed onto youtube or streamed onto facebook live but you had no audience it was just shouting at your camera and assuming that people were laughing and those felt weird but even then it was just quite nice to sort of do your material again and see if you could kind of remember it but then when the sort of um when the zoom one started to happen where you know audience members in the call and stuff and you could kind of go oh this is you know it's not the same because there's a delay and you never yeah. really know if people are enjoying it and um you know it, it, it's it, you know it, it's, it's never going to be the same but it's it's the next best thing i think like what it's if, if that if that's all we totally can do for now yeah but i was i was chatting to and i compare quite a few of them now which i feel like that's quite a nice way to compare you know quite a nice way to compare because you've got everybody individually you can sort of yeah. the people who've chosen to be in that room want to be there you don't have any of that well in theory you don't have any of that oh, I don't want to be on the front row, I hope I don't get picked on. Like, you know, sort of, people are there, they've got their cameras on. If you, if you don't want to be picked on, turn your fucking camera off. You, know? <laughs> you, you can get away from it. But I think I was chatting to, and, and also, and I think I mentioned this on um, Maureen Younger's chat show last yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, last week, the, the idea that I, I did this gig for, uh, for Neath Rugby Club, and that would have been quite an intimidating gig, like full of like proper, proper alpha boys. Um, in real life but they were all individually in their screens and stuff they were all at home they were all I mean, really chilled and really laughing along and it was just sort of because they didn't have that pack mentality or maybe yeah. they're just lovely anyway but yeah. it, it just felt like it, they didn't have that pack mentality so that's probably a beneficial way of doing it I've also chatted to some people of whether they think people these gigs will carry on like uh, when the normal world happens and I think most people would assume that you, they would just get packed in but I wonder whether there's there's avenues you know like you know, Rachel and Marcus, I'm sure they'll continue to do Tuesday Night Club in real life. You know, they they, they, they can do that. That You know, that it's perfect for them. Yeah. But then for people who can't get to London, like in terms of an accessibility thing, it's great. Exactly, like anybody yeah. anybody yeah. in the world can watch these things. And then for previews, you know, it might be more beneficial to go, I'm doing a work in progress of my new hour show on this date. Um rather than me driving yeah. 10 hours to do a gig and it gets cancelled while I'm there because four people turn out. Why yeah. don't I just do that to, online? And it might not be the same and I'll still have to do it in real life before I take it to the fringe. But I, I, think, th I, think, I, think, I think there's room um, for them. I think that, I mean, live is unbelievable. Live is the best because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You're right. This is the best the next best thing and if this hadn't have been here the online format i don't know how i would have got got through lockdown because yeah um uh i love watching uh, either online comedy or live comedy i think maybe when um we get back to some sort of normality there may well be an online performance as you say so people could watch who are not actually in the area I think that may be an idea, but um, uh, for me, you can't beat live. You can't. No, beat absolutely. Live. That 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 energy yeah. and yeah, you, you know, just like, don't when know I can't... what's going to happen next. Yeah, definitely. And it's just it's so infectious, yeah. isn't it? That that kind of like yeah. I don't think there are many art forms like it where yeah. it literally anything could happen with yeah. it, and it's I just. Am, um... I am very honoured to be um, sitting on the front row. I'll always be comedy online, uh, but. Um, uh, um, when I first started doing all these online audiences 
there was no audio, there was no laugh at all. There was, nobody could hear anything. So I was yeah. just laughing at four walls, and I thought I was going to be taken away because I would. Be yeah, like, totally, <laughs> totally. I know that's the, that's I the think, thing. I, I think the way they've done it, the format they've done it, is phenomenal. You know, because yeah. if folk don't want to go on the front row, they can sit in the audience and still watch, but they have this other front row yeah. that they can chat to and all the rest of it. So. I mean, it's incredible, um, and it's not just always be comedy. I go to Return of the Crack, the Charles Regan one, uh, Maureen shows, um, yeah. Happy Mondays with Sean James. Um, there's loads and loads and loads of them, but um, uh, please, please, please come back live comedy. I miss going to uh, just the tonic. I miss going to um, the So Theatre. Uh, the banana cabaret I love to go and have a few beers beforehand and then sit there with my friends and just go right please make me laugh and yeah. it's very very rare that I sit there in silence <laughs> yeah 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 sure yeah I think I think I think the day I see you in silence when I'm on stage with the day I quit comedy I think that'll be it. <laughs> <You're very kind. laughs> right um, so, uh, who are your favourite comedians, past and present? Um, so, the aforementioned Russell Howard, it feels like it's a proper love letter, this interview to him. Um, so him, and then I guess yeah, Tom Rugglesworth as well, that, sh that show kind of blew my mind. Um, yeah. At the moment, um, uh, John Mulaney, I just oh, really, super, really love, yeah. love his specials. And yeah. yeah, just sort of, and the fact that he the, does... First, I think I'm just thinking. I think he was on the first bill I saw at the Comedy Store. Oh, really? When I first came down to London about 1990. The head, oh, nice. The headliner was Charles Fleischer, who was a nutter, and he went. He was an American who went on to voice Roger Rabbit, so he was never seen okay. again. Okay, <laughs> sure. Um, sorry, I sorry, think... I interrupted you. Please. No, that's all. I, I think you're talking about John Maloney, who I also really like, but I'm talking about John Mulaney. Oh, Mulaney. Sorry, Mulaney. yes, I have heard of him as Not well. Not at all. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I, 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 I like I like Maloney a lot. He's he's, he's a very yeah. funny man. Um, uh, but Mulaney, um, yeah, yeah, like, yeah like Net fair. Netflix specials, and I, li I like the fact that he's sort of you know started kind of as a, like got good as a writer like an snl writer because obviously i've i feel like my career has kind of the, the writing is i think surpassed me as a stand-up yeah, yeah very much so very much so um, yeah so and I, I enjoy i enjoy doing both things um but it, but it's i think similar to that comparing doing an act it, if i'm doing loads of writing all i want to do is try new material and if i'm doing if I'm on the back of six gigs a week, all I want to do is just sit in a writer's room and not and have an early night, you know. So, yeah, That's it's, it's, it's I, I feel lucky to be doing both of them for sure. Um, so yeah, those Good guys. Yeah. Um, I I really really love Rachel Paris. Like she's what one of the nicest people. Yeah. Like we're, we're lucky that we've worked to get. Like I'm very lucky that I've I've worked with her and for yeah. her on 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 various occasions and. Her yeah, musical and, ability is amazing, staggering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just She's staggering. just um. We we went to she she did this corporate in Sweden at the start of probably a year ago as we're recording this now February, yeah Feb, February twenty twenty. Yeah. This corporate in Sweden, and I wrote some stuff for her on it. So they flew us out to Sweden together, and we just spent like the most lovely sort of thirty six hours in Sweden. Oh, it was fantastic. great. Um. So yeah, it's um. It's it's nice to kind of see these people who, yeah, I, I saw on TV and stuff like, and now can consider sort of mates. It's really, yeah, it's really yeah, like yeah. as a sort of fanboy, it's really lovely. It's similar, it's similar to me because I love to uh, watch new comedians and watch them develop as they go along, and it's fantastic to see. the The reason why I asked the question was um, in my blog. There's a section called the ones that got away. And, right. I've, and I've written 25 uh, comedian, written blogs about 25 comedians um, who have either passed on, unfortunately, or I just haven't had a chance to see them. And yeah. in there is uh, Top of the Tree is Morecambe and Wise. I would have loved to have sure. seen them. Uh, Bob Monkhouse, Dave Allen. Um, uh, and it just goes on and on and on. And the memories that I've had, of course, of it through writing the blog, I thought it. I thought it would make for a good question. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, as I say, sort of, Eddie Izzard was the first sort of um, stand-up I ever saw. So wow. I think that that's quite sort of... Um, that's brilliant. Yeah, is, uh, yeah, definitely. And kind of very, yeah, very s- silly and surreal and things. And I mean, like, I, I, I try to... I found out that when I'm driving to gigs, you can watch slash listen to Netflix specials. Yeah. But, but without the video coming on, you can start the Netflix special then go back onto your Google Maps or whatever and it'll still play through the car audio. So I just basically just listen to every wow. Netflix special and every stand-up special that's on Spotify. Oh, brilliant. Like, I'm, st- I'm still, like, properly obsessed with it, which I think is quite nice. <laughs> so am I, my friend. So am I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, like me, do you go to a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience? Um, I used to a lot more. Yeah. Um, and... Not as much as I'd like to. Yeah. I think when, when I was when I moved to London, I started to do you know because there's this you know x you know you know ten a night across you know wherever you know I've done and, it. you know <laughs> yeah exactly that's it and you know shows at Soho and everywhere there's yeah, so much yeah. you can see there but at the same time I was trying to gig as much as I could in London when I moved there so I was. No, I don't. I don't go to see very much. And I also, it's really bad. This, but I not in Edinburgh, but I resent paying for comedy. <laughs> and I think, and I think it's because I spent I spent six years working at the Glee, where I watched everything for free, and then I did it, you know, for, for, for the following seven years, and I, I get into gigs for free. So why why should I have to pay for it? It I seems always, crazy. I always say for my blog. Um... And I am a, 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 a fee-paying member of the audience, but I yeah. think sometimes, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, totally. Um, you know, it would be. It's um, you know, Edinburgh is completely different, and yeah. someone's tour. If I'm going to see someone's tour show, I think that's you know, like it's supporting a mate or oh, whatever. Yes, like, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. never, I'll never yeah. take a comp. Like, I'll no, always, no, no. I'll always pay. You know. Um, just before we go, um, is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, where can people find you on social media? Are you writing any books, any shows? Uh, are you in any podcasts? Anything like that? So I am. Uh, yes, I'm on social media. On Twitter, I'm Robin J A Y Morgan. Robin J Morgan on Instagram and Facebook. I'm just Robin J Morgan with the letter J. It's very confusing. <laughs> um, basically, there's there's so there's some guy on Twitter called Robin J Morgan who also looks like me, and it's infuriating. That I reckon he's annoying. got followers. I reckon he's got <laughs> followers off me. One time he got me pulled off a bill once in Edinburgh. I was, no. I was supposed to be set list for um kai humphreys and they yeah. tagged everybody the day of and he replied saying so they tagged him and he replied saying oh sorry guys i can't do it tonight i've got the shits and then <laughs> i went to the i went to the gig and then they were like i thought you were I thought you were ill and i was like no and then they eventually put me on but i was like you fucking prick man you got me <laughs> you cancelled me this is cancel culture <laughs> um, <laughs> so, that's a great um, story so ev- everybody don't follow me just Who follow him and just and tr- and troll him <laughs> troll him forever yeah. um so um, i'm also i also do a podcast with uh, two other fab comics called leila navabi and priya hall which is called here to judge yeah uh, and we're, we're doing a live show uh, actually you know this is going out in may isn't it so I, there's no point plugging a leicester comedy festival this will go out on the first of may and the less the comedy festival is going on now yeah sure so, so i guess what, what i can say is subscribe to here to judge pod and yeah. uh, there'll be tons of episodes by that point yeah, we'll yeah, have done yeah. a few live episodes by that point as well so you can listen to those um Brilliant. other than that i think that's pretty much it me and ellie taylor are writing a radio 4 thing so that that should be out in may wow. maybe maybe may june called is, Safe the, Space. is that a series or a one-off special no, it's, it's our second series, actually. It's four episodes. Right. So Ellie, basically, it's Ellie's show, and I play her kind of assistant slash rat sidekick. Right. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> no, it's, it's, self, it's self, self-written. I've written myself as that. <laughs> well, I wish you every success in whatever you do, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you live again very soon, either live or online. You've, Thanks, been, you've been an absolute delight to talk to. I've so enjoyed it. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. No, thanks for having me, mate. Lovely to see you. You take care, my friend. All the best. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you later.